Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about overfitting in machine learning. Before moving on, let us take a look at the agenda for this session. So I'm going to start with the basic introduction to overfitting in machine learning. After this, I will discuss various examples of overfitting. Then I will discuss noise and signal in a data set and moving further, I will discuss underfitting briefly. And then I will tell you about how you can avoid or detect overfitting in machine learning. And finally, to sum up this session, I will tell you about the bias variance trade off. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. And also, do check out the Edureka's machine learning certification training. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let us understand overfitting in machine learning. So, what exactly is overfitting in machine learning? A statistical model is said to be overfitted when we feed it a lot more data than necessary. To make it relatable, imagine trying to fit into an oversized apparel. I mean, when a model fits data more than it actually needs, it starts catching the noisy data and inaccurate values in the data as well. As a result, the efficiency and the accuracy of the model decreases. Also, let's take a look at a few examples in order to understand how it actually happens. If we take an example of simple linear regression, Training the data is all about finding out the minimum cost between the best fit line and the data points. So it goes through a number of iterations to find out the optimum best fit, which is after we get by minimizing the cost. So this is where overfitting comes into the picture. So the line seen in the image above can give a very efficient outcome for a new data point. In the case of overfitting, when we run the training algorithm on the data set, we allow the cost to reduce with each number of iterations. So running this algorithm for too long will mean a reduced cost, but it will also fit the noisy data from the data set. The result would look something like I have shown you in the graph below and this might look efficient, but it's not really the main goal of the algorithm such as linear regression is to find a dominant trend and fit the data points accordingly. But in this case, the line fits all the data points, which is irrelevant to the efficiency of the model in predicting optimum outcomes for the new entry data points. Now let us consider a more descriptive example with the help of a problem statement as well. So let's say we have a problem statement which says we have to consider like we want to predict if a soccer player will land a slot in the tier one football club based on his or her current performance in the tier two league. So now imagine we train and fit the model with 10,000 such players with the outcomes as well. And when we try to predict the outcome on an original data set, let us say we got a 99% accuracy, but the accuracy on a different data set comes around 50%. This means the model does not generalize well from our training data and unseen data. So this is what overfitting looks like. It is a very common problem in machine learning and even data science. So now let us understand the signal and noise as well. I have told you that the model will pick up the noise from the data set in predictive modeling signal refers to the true underlying pattern that helps the model to learn the data. On the other hand, Noise is irrelevant and random data in the data set. So to understand the concept of noise and signal, let us take a few real life examples. So let us suppose we want to model age versus literacy among adults. And if we sample a large part of the population, we will find a clear relationship between the two. This is the signal whereas noise interface with the data. So the relationship between age and literacy, if we do it in a small population like a city or maybe a district and the relationship will become slightly muddier. So it would be affected by outliers and randomness as well. For example, like one adult went to school early or some adult cannot actually afford education or could not afford education. So these are the outliers and the randomness in the data set that will be picked up as noisy data. Now talking about noise and signals in terms of machine learning, a good machine learning algorithm will accurately or automatically separate signals from the noise. And if the algorithm is too complex or the algorithm is inefficient, it may learn the noise too, hence overfitting the model. So let us understand underfitting in machine learning as well. So what exactly is underfitting? Now that we know that overfitting is, you know, feeding the lot more data than necessary to the model. But in order to avoid overfitting, we could stop the training set at an earlier stage. Like we are not gonna feed the data to the model after a certain point, but it might also lead to the model not being able to learn enough from the training data so that it may find it difficult to capture the dominant trend. This is known as underfitting. Now the result is the same as overfitting like it will cause inefficiency in predicting the outcomes. 
but it's gonna take a little less data that it needs to you know actually recognize the dominant trend inside the data set so now that we have understood what underfitting and overfitting in machine learning really is let us try to understand how we can detect overfitting in machine learning so the main challenge with overfitting is to estimate the accuracy of the performance of our model with the new data we would not be able to estimate the accuracy until we actually test it to address this problem we can split the initial data set into separate training and test data sets so with this technique we can actually approximate how well our model will perform with the new data so let us understand this with an example so let's say we have a 90 plus percent accuracy on the training set and a 50 percent accuracy on the test set then automatically it would be a red flag for the model like it's not efficient enough because it's causing different accuracy levels on both the training and the test data and another way to detect overfitting is to start with a simplistic model that will serve as a benchmark so with this approach if you try more complex algorithms you will be able to understand if the additional complexity is even worthwhile for the model or not so it is also known as occam's razor test it basically chooses a simplistic model in case of comparable performances in case of two models like if you have two models which has absolutely comparable complexities so it's going to choose the simplistic model from the lot although detecting overfitting is a good practice but there are several techniques to actually prevent overfitting as well so let us take a look at how we can prevent overfitting in machine learning so there are several techniques to avoid overfitting in machine learning altogether which are cross validation then we have training with more data then we have removing features early stopping regularization and ensembling as well so let's talk about each of them in detail guys so first of all let's talk about cross validation so one of the most powerful features to avoid or prevent overfitting is cross validation the idea behind this is to use the initial training data to generate mini train test splits and then use these splits to tune your model in a standard k-fold validation the data is partitioned into k subsets also known as folds and after this the algorithm is trained iteratively on k-1 folds while using the remaining folds as the test set which is also known as the holdout fold the cross validation helps us to tune the hyperparameters with only the original training set and it basically keeps the test set separately as a true unseen data which is going to be selected for the final model hence avoiding the overfitting altogether so this is what is cross validation all about in terms of overfitting or avoiding or preventing the overfitting now let's talk about training with more data how does that help in preventing overfitting in machine learning so this technique might not work every time as we have also discussed in the example above when i told you about training with a significant amount of population which helps the model in recognizing the dominant pattern but it basically helps the model in identifying the signal better but in some cases the increased data can also mean feeding more noise to the model like we are feeding more data but with that we are actually providing more noise to the model as well but when we are training the model with more data we have to make sure that data is actually clean and free from any randomness or inconsistencies then only it's going to work for us in preventing overfitting in machine learning now talking about removing features now although some algorithms have an automatic selection of features for a significant number of those who does not have a built-in feature selection we can manually remove a few irrelevant features from the input features to improve the generalization so one way to do it is by deriving a conclusion as to how a feature fits into the model it is quite similar to debugging the code line by line and in case if a feature is unable to explain the relevancy in the model we can simply identify those features and remove them we can also use a few feature selection heuristics for a good starting point as well so this is how removing features can actually prevent overfitting in machine learning now talking about early stopping so when the model is training you can actually measure how well the model performs based on each iteration and we can do this until a point when the iterations improve the model's performance but after this the model overfits the training data as the generalization weakens after each iteration so basically early stopping means we are stopping the training process before the model passes that point where the model begins to overfit the training data so this technique is mostly used in deep learning but we can use it for machine learning as well talking about regularization it basically means artificially forcing your model to be simpler by using a broader range of techniques so it can totally depend on the type of learner that we are using for example we can prune a decision tree 
and we can use a dropout on a neural network or we can actually add a penalty parameter to the cost function in regression as well. So quite often regularization is a hyper parameter as well. It basically means it can be also tuned through cross validation as well. So this is all about regularization to prevent overfitting in machine learning. Talking about ensembling now, this technique basically combines predictions from different machine learning models. So the two of the most common methods for ensembling are bagging attempts to reduce the chance of overfitting the models and then we have a boosting attempt to improve the predictive flexibility of simpler models. So this is how ensembling can actually prevent overfitting in machine learning. So even though they are both ensemble methods, the approach totally starts from opposite directions. So bagging uses complex base models and tries to smooth out their predictions while boosting uses simple base models and tries to boost its aggregate complexity. Now briefly talking about what is actually goodness of fit. So in statistic modeling, the goodness of fit refers to how closely the outcomes or the predicted values match the observed or true values. A model that has learned noise instead of the signal is overfitted because it will fit the training data set but will have a poor efficiency with the new data set. So this is goodness of fit guys. I have actually drawn this graph over here for better understanding. Now talking about the trade off between bias and variance. Both variance and bias are forms of prediction error in machine learning. The trade off between high variance and high bias is a very important concept in both statistics and machine learning. This is basically one concept that affects all the supervised machine learning algorithms. The bias variance trade off has a very significant impact on determining the complexity, underfitting, and overfitting for any machine learning model. Now, talking about bias, it is nothing but the difference between the predicted values and the actual or true values in the model. It is not always easy for the model to learn from the rather complex signals. So, let us imagine fitting a linear regression to a model with non linear data. So no matter how efficiently the model learns the observations, it will not model the curves efficiently and it is also known as underfitting. Now talking about variance, it refers to the model sensitivity to specific sets in the training data. So a high variance algorithm will produce a bizarre model that is drastically different from the training set. Now imagine an algorithm that fits the unconstrained and super flexible model. It will also learn from the noise in the training set causing overfitting. Now talking about bias variance trade off a machine learning algorithm cannot be perceived as a one time method for training the model. Instead it is a repetitive process. So the low variance high bias algorithms are less complex with a simple and rigid structure. They will actually train the models that are consistent but inaccurate on average. Also these include linear or parametric algorithms such as regression naive bias etc. High variance low bias algorithms tend to be more complex with a flexible structure and they're going to train the models that are inconsistent but accurate on average. These are going to include nonlinear and non parametric algorithms such as decision trees nearest neighbor etc. So now that we have come to the end of the session guys, I hope you are clear with overfitting in machine learning and don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon for latest updates on Edureka. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.